All right, so we are going to start Matt's lift, uh, flush mounted lift project. He's been wanting to do this for a long time, so now that I'm here, we're gonna, we're gonna get it done. Um, we're gonna show you the steps, basically, how we're gonna do it. Um, we're gonna basically pull the Swiss tracks up. I'll lay, lay out the lift, the footprint on the ground. We'll go get a concrete saw. We'll end up cutting the concrete, and then I will you know, rebar concrete and back in the pit, install the lift, and uh, we're gonna kind of lay it out, play with it, just so we have, uh, make sure we have enough room between drawers open and where the car will be so that you can comfortably walk through with doors open. So we'll, we'll basically show you the step-by-step -step of how we're gonna do it. And uh, yeah, get started. So flooring's out. I think this is enough uh, to not create too much mess on the rest of the Swiss tracks when I'm using the saw. We'll have to pull out a path from the roll-up door to here so we can get the forklift in and out without screwing that part of the Swiss tracks up, but we'll leave that for now. So right now I'm gonna go grab a broom, get this all swept up so it's nice and clean, and then, uh, and then I'll lay out the floor, and then we can uh, kind of look at that with Matt and see what he thinks, see if he likes that placement, and then we'll, uh, then I guess we'll maybe be doing some sawing. Now I know Matt had this fully swept before putting Swiss tracks down. So the fact that all this was hidden and that it literally looked brand new, like it didn't look like this space had ever even been used, it's a testament to how well. I think people get peeved about the fact that there's, oh, there's dirt underneath. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, you don't see it. I didn't see it. Now that I pulled it up, I'm like, well, before I lay this out, I got to sweep it up and it's, it's remarkable how much there is underneath it without it looking like there's even a crumb under it. And this literally took 15 minutes to pull up and tear all apart and stack. So and when you're cleaning under this, you don't even have to undo it. You just do undo it in big sections and sweep it up if you wanted to. You don't even have to. Look at that. That's only about a 12 by 12 area. Quite a bit hidden. All right, so what we did was pull Matt's car in here, the M3, because it's pretty much an average size car. Got it comfortable with working with a drawer open, so you can open a drawer, stand in front of the drawer, and there's actually some some fudge factor here because he's going to sometimes be working on the a Raptor or, or maybe my truck. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to lay out the uh, distance from center to axle, center to axle, and then we'll put some tape on the ground mark off edge of tire, edge of tire, and then we'll pull the car back out and we'll use that as our reference. And then we'll lay it out uh, at a 45 from the building and that should be spot on. The Jumbo 7 uh, has a uh, sketch, a plan view drawing. It's 33 inches apart is where they want each individual scissor. They want the edges 33 inches apart. So they want the, the hole that you cut for each scissor to be, I think it was 26, no, 28 inches. We're going to tighten that up a little bit. Matt doesn't like the spacing, nor do I, uh, that they give you. It's too much gap between the edge of the uh, edge of the opening and the edge of the lift. It looks kind of goofy. It's about an inch and a half or inch and a quarter space, and you really don't need that. I don't know what the purpose is for that, but um, when we did the last one, we, we, we thought on this one we're going to tighten it up a little bit. So we're going to be about 26 and a half inches uh on our on our each scissor opening for the for the foundation and 82 inches uh long and then like i said 33 inches apart is what the scissor calls for or the dimension for each scissor to scissor um and i think what we're going to do is i factored in a half an inch on either side of gap so we'll subtract half an inch on that makes it like 32 inches is where the edge of the, each foundation will be about 32 inches apart Behind the scenes, just checking to see if the local rental yard has a walk behind concrete saw. So we are double checking that it uh, will uh, go to uh, the correct depth. This one will not. I'm just looking at that. That was, that was it, not the one. So we want one that'll go at least six inches. Oh, here we go. Cutting depth up to seven and five eighths inches. 
That's the one I think we'll call these dudes. Hide that there from like sugary. You want just that audio? Sugary substance there. Um, what do you guys have uh, in the way of Walker County? Are they are concrete cells? Are they electric or gas or both? Or what do you have? Yeah, definitely want to walk behind. Are they self propelled or man powered? <laughs> yeah, okay. An 18 inch blade. Okay, perfect. All right, thanks, man. So I got everything laid out. This is where the lift is going. Uh, we got it at a pretty close to perfect 45 with the uh, with the space, which is was really what Matt wanted. And then centered uh, the center of the lift basically is right at the corner, pointing right at the corner of the uh, of the uh, building. So that that's everything's ready to go. I've got these. We we tighten this up a little bit. I think I mentioned that earlier. Um, so Nussbaum says 28 inches. Uh, we we're gonna tile the inside. So finished out, it'll be right around 26 half, which will give us just over a half an inch of clearance on either side. So normally it's like an inch and a quarter. Um, we kept the overall length the same because it has to be for the ramps to fit down in there, the, the collapsible ramps. And then this is sleeving for uh, from this side to this side for the uh, hydraulic lines to go through. So last thing I have to do is lay out for just, um, we're gonna end up sleeving under the slab for the control unit's gonna sit right in front of this column. So I'm gonna make a six inch wide, roughly uh, slot through the floor and we'll put some PVC sleeving in. And then when we pour all this out, we can just run the lines through later. So I'm gonna get to that and then we're, we're off to go get a saw. This is the daily. This is the 99.73. Yeah, she's, uh, she gets it. And I do drink coffee in my truck. It's coffee, by the way, not mochaccinos or whatever the heck people get at Starbucks. But I don't spill it in my truck. That's the key. You drink it in the truck, not spill it in the truck. That's my that's my fuel. Maddie's Maddie, it's snacks. Me, it's coffee. Turn right onto US 441. I had to go English, lady. I got so sick of the regular Siri lady telling me she didn't know where I would, what I was saying. And please try again later. I don't know, English lady seems to know more than American lady. Great, thanks sir. Apparently they've got a pressure washer over there, Mike. I know, a little different. Yeah, well I like it better. Yeah, too many restrictions in California. You need to be able to do what you want to do here, Mike. Oops. That's all right, they've probably never seen this before. Like, what are these yahoos doing? They're probably gonna go kill themselves with this saw. You watch, that's what they're thinking. They, we're, we're, we're the talk of United Rentals right now. Yeah. All right, so what I'm doing here in an effort to make the, the cuts nice and straight, I've done this in the past, is I've got some angle iron. Um, and what I'm doing is I'm going to redhead the angle iron down, or you know, wedge anchor, uh, the angle iron down to this is the, gonna be the cut piece, so I'll prefer to, obviously you could drill out here, but then you'd have holes. So this is coming out anyway, so I'm gonna line the, line the angle, angle iron up with the cut, uh, wedge anchor it down to this, and then I can bring the blade right next to it and use this as kind of a, a, a rip fence or a guide so I get a nice straight cut, because we're, we're going to end up tiling the inside of the cut and we want to obviously, and for aesthetics, with cutting the Swiss tracks and everything, we want nice straight lines. So this helps. It's not, you can't just let it go, you know, let the saw go. You have to push it anyway, uh, and you have to be mindful, but at least you have a guide.
So that's why I'm doing this. After this is basically I'll, I'll, I'll redhead one down or, or wedge anchor one down and then make a cut, unbolt it, vacuum up all the slurry that's around it and move to the next cut, so one at a time. How do you get these lines straight here? The lines that I marked? Yeah, well, so, so I used two things. I used a laser, a laser to uh, line everything up, get everything at the correct angle at 45 and then I used some uh, six foot straight edges to uh, to make to make the to draw the lines. So these are wedge anchors. So this is the brand. We get these at got these at Depot. So they're they're just quarter by two and a quarter. So it doesn't need to be anything crazy, just because we're using them as a guide, not to really hold anything down substantial. So I got the smallest they have. and straight nice and straight so basically rinse and repeat I got one two three four five six seven eight nine more cuts yep take it up I'll move to the next one I'll cut all the long cuts first so I got to flip it 180 cut this one cut those two and then I can go across and do those hit those two this one's one long cut the only one I'll probably free cut is this one I won't need to do it there because that's getting re-concreted uh, in when I put the sleeve in. So that really doesn't matter if it's real perfectly straight. This, these do matter. So that you can't get it much straighter than that. If you try to free cut this without this, you end up having a little bit of wiggle. We don't want wiggle. We want straight, laser straight. So we are three of the long cuts into it. Uh, I'm gonna about to unbolt that angle there, move it over to this long cut here. And then I'll start on the shortcuts across it. And yeah, we're, I'm about, I don't know, probably 45 minutes in. Maybe, I don't know, maybe an hour. Yeah, about an hour. So it takes some time. You have to unbolt the angle iron. I'm having to manage the, the slurry that's going every which way, vacuum that up so we don't get it all over, put plastic up so we're not spraying it on the M3. Of course, we got our, our pallet backstop here with some plastic. We already, I already made the mistake spraying it on the cabinet, so we're not gonna have that happen again. So anyway, that takes a little time, but uh, should probably got another hour to go and then it'll, it'll all be cut and we can start. Uh, I gotta make some cuts across to uh, get a starting point so we can pull a piece out and then from there I can hit a sledgehammer, get it with a sledgehammer and get the uh, corners because I'm not overcutting here. So typically what you want to do if you're not worried about aesthetics, you cut pat well past on both directions and then this block will come out. But what I'm doing is I'm stopping short so I'm not doing overcut because the radius of the blade is somewhere uh, right here. So I'm coming to the edge. So we haven't really effectively cut through the concrete all the way here. So what I'll do is get all the cuts done, take a chunk out of the middle, and then I'll hit this with a sledgehammer. It'll break it here, and it'll still be clean cuts because we've scored it on the top, so on the surface. Alright, 
So the thing to note is I'm not, I'm on the inside of the line. The actual dimension of what we're cutting is outside line to outside line, right? So what we have is kerf on the blade, right? Which is the, the, the width that the blade removes when it cuts. So what I've, I've done is I've cut, I'm putting the angle to the inside of the line, then as the blade cuts, it'll, just, it'll take the line away and will effectively be just to the outside line, which is the dimension we're looking for. All right, so we cut a little ahead of ourselves. Just did a test piece here, pulled it out with a forklift, and how I'm doing that, I'm using these wedge anchors, half inch wedge anchors, half inch by half inch 13 thread wedge anchors. Then I use coupling nuts, I drill with the roto hammer, put these in the ground, and then I thread on the eye bolt with the coupling nut, and then I use a couple of shackles or clevises on the end of this strap and uh, basically use the forklift. I, I try to pull up on this end first because we remember we haven't cut all the way through in the corner. So what we want to do is fracture it and then this piece should just lift straight up and out. So I'll show you how, how, they, how I'm doing that. Safety first, Mike. No safety glasses, but you know, I want to be able to hear later in life. Okay, so we eyeball about center, which is about right there. Then what I do is spin these couplers off. And this is a, a sacrificial bolt because if you hit the top of this a lot, you'll round it over and then you'll never get a coupling nut on there. So what I do is I thread this one on here and this being my sacrificial bolt, thread that in there. out the eye bolt goes in if you didn't have a forklift you would use a couple you'd need two floor jacks and then you could do essentially the same thing except that instead of using an eye bolt you'd use a piece of all thread or threaded rod get a get a four by four or a four by six and straddle the cut on either side and then you'd need to use it put the four by six perpendicular to the cut uh, drill a hole through it, get the all thread poking through it, put big nuts and washers on the top, and then you could use a floor jack on either side to jack it out of the ground. You'd have to pick a center point, you know, so it'd kind of pull up together, because unless you had four floor jacks, then you could straddle two, two four by sixes or four by fours, but um, that's how I'd do it. Okay, so now, I'm not used to these electric forklifts, Mike. The gas ones, you just start and go. This one, you got to wait for it to say, okay, I'm ready to go. Hit the brake once, please. Yeah, I got it. So, let's go on here, like so. Shackle gets thread through. This is so it can, if you, if you don't use a shackle, what'll happen is as it squeeze, it might try to bend over the bolt or bend the, bend the, um, I bolt, so using a shackle, it gives it a point to pivot. This stuff was hard to procure here in Lady Lake, near the villages. I guess old people don't use uh, shackles or eye bolts or coupling nuts, so I had to go to a farm supply place. Okay, so we're gonna come up a little bit. What we want is that front one to get tight first. So we tilt back a little bit. What we wanna do is come up on that so it it fractures it at the, let me check it. Okay, this one's starting to get tight first. That's what we want. There it goes. Right, forward a little bit. And then come straight up. Let's 
plastic under there. Swing this way a little bit. And there she is. set it on our pallet outside, Mike. It's a little bit of a learning curve getting all our equipment in place here because I had all this stuff before down in California, but we're gonna build up some inventory on some things so we can do this kind of stuff more easily. I don't have to hunt for everything. So I've got this out. So I'm basically gonna do the same on this section and this section. The forklift, I'll pull this little piece out here where it's where the sleeve will be, and then I've got to chip out a little bit right there with the uh, roto hammer just to get uh, that's going to be our, our conduit that we're going to put in the ground for a hydraulic line. So, anyway, same process, just three more times. <music> Yep, last big piece. This one should come out pretty easily since there's nothing ahead of it. Let's do it. Oh yeah. There we go. That was easier than I thought. Next thing is to clean up the corners, the inside corners of all the cuts. I'm gonna chip out where the, um, where the lines are gonna go to the control. We have a, there's like a drywall column there that Matt wants to put the control in front of. So I gotta finish chipping that out because we're not going full depth on that. Um, Cause there's a big footing there. We're just gonna just chip away a little bit just to make enough room for the lines. Funny thing is there's no rebar in this existing slab, which I was surprised to see. Taking it back. Warehouse guys are crying for it. They just like driving around, you know, cruising around, picking up their lunch with it and all that. It's good in the drive through though, because it's so quiet, you know? You can order Starbucks and plenty of room for a palletization of Starbucks coffees, you know? That's right, hey, I forgot about that. Yeah, the cups fit right through here. I got Sriracha in the cup holder here. I'm gonna have to chip this to here, because this is where the control box is going. So we didn't go all the way through here, we're just chipping enough to get the lines through. So that's that's next. And then, uh, then we'll be cleaning up and getting ready for taking some of this soil out of here so we can uh, make room for the, the slab, which is gonna be roughly four and a quarter inches below this surface. So I had everything out on pallets, scattered all around on three pallets. So I took everything off of uh, one of the, uh, the other two pallets, condensed everything on one. So this stuff's going to the uh, concrete recycler. You can do two things you can do. Take it to the dump, throw it away as like waste, or try to find a recycler. There happens to be one about 20 minutes away. It's a lot cheaper to haul it off there especially if it doesn't have rebar in it, which this doesn't, so they'll grind it up and use it for road base or whatever. So anyway, I'm gonna load it in the truck and, and we're gonna head down and get rid of it. Yeah, I wish 
Should we turn the Should we turn the, the English lady off? Yeah, I like her. You like her? Yeah. She's all right. She's She just sounds smart, yeah. sophisticated. The next stop sign. Turn right. I don't know why they don't have, like, for the area, you know, old lady redneck. The California turn, nav lady should be telling you to slow down. You're driving too fast. Yeah. Turn left. You missed it. Oh my gosh, you're wasting fuel. I know if I talk to somebody or I just back up and throw it in the freaking pile. <laughs> usually, usually there's an office you go to, say, okay, I'm, I'm unloading some concrete here. I'll go up and see what he says here. How you doing? Just dropping some off. Just throw it. Perfect. Thank you. That's how you do it, Mike. You just throw it down. <laughs> Whatever you want to do. You just got to hug it here in this pile here. All right, then. We got some wet concrete there. We don't want to drive through that, Mike. That'll yeah, get all over the truck. Oh, yeah, that's that's heavy. I'm gonna have to clean this out when we get back, Mike. It's not acceptable. Yeah, in the sand, the dirt. My shoes are all dirty. Truck's full of concrete. Yeah, wash and talk up next, Mike. Might have to condense it into just a quick power wash and chat, but it needs to be done, Mike. It's pretty dirty. I took tailgate down and just romp on it here and just sprinkle the road with that stuff, huh? Yeah. Clearing some of the dust out anyway. That was a uh, that was good, Mike. I like it. I like doing stuff like this. All right, so we are done with pulling concrete out. That's the hard parts done. Everything sawed. I cleaned up all the corners. Um, next step on um, the next video will probably show um, excavation. So I'm going to have to take this soil down roughly four to five inches to make room for the concrete, which is going to be down below grade, below this grade. So uh, we'll be putting rebar in, um, probably, I might have to compact the soil, we'll see. I'm gonna only cut away, I'm not gonna add fill, so you don't really need to compact unless you're adding fill. And I'm gonna try not to overcut so I don't have to add anything. Um, so anyway, so next video, we'll be showing uh, prepping for concrete pouring. So uh, yeah, it's coming along. Mm -hmm.